we have the highest rate of mental illness in the world. The Journal of the American Medical Association published a UN report on brain damage on mental illness around the world by country. And over 26% of the American population has some form of mental illness. Nigeria is less than 4% because they were not subjected to bomb test material like Americans were. And um, so this is the effect of Fukushima, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of times more radiation than Chernobyl re released. This is the greatest and most horrific military weapon that's ever been used in the history of the world. This is a fact, and it's a triple weapon. It works three different ways right now, and it's working very efficiently. You have got your fission fusion processes going on uh, down with the uh, plutonium and the uranium. Those are creating nanospheres, what was yes. being described a moment ago. They are creating the Bremsstrahlung and actively creating Wigner dust in an accelerated fashion out of Fukushima. The plant, the town, the rocks, the trees, all of it, and it is actively neutron pulsing. Triple weapon. And Triple it's weapon. very effective. How do you turn this one on? You well, can't. Loren, can you explain a little bit more about what Wigner dust is? Yes. For people who maybe don't understand the concept and then also, how does that synergize with other contamination issues that we have in our environment in terms of health? Like you had mentioned the mental illness, and we know also that we've had, you know, fluoride that's been added to our, our drinking water for years and other, you right. know, toxic areas in our environment. And you and I have also followed stories closely, um, like the Malibu High School situation right. where they had toxic building materials and this was a school in a, in a high-risk area that's on the West Coast that had been hit with fallout where a number of teachers and students were, were getting sick, and I think there were like six people from just that one school right. that developed thyroid cancer, and now, you know, birth defects happening around Hanford at an exponential rate. How is this all synergizing, and where does this Wigner or Wigner dust fit into all this? Um, when there is a nuclear event that reaches high temperatures. Those high temperatures are energy that breaks the molecular bonds of matter or materials that are involved in that uh, event. Those produce nanoparticles if the temperatures are high enough. And in the case of depleted uranium used in bombs and missiles, warheads, bullets, Every munition now practically has an option to use depleted uranium in it. And they, uh, when they catch on fire, uranium is pyrophoric. In other words, it's a metal that burns. It burns at 5,000 degrees centigrade, which is hotter than the sun. And so it breaks these molecules into smaller and smaller parts and what uh, depleted uranium does is it actually creates a radioactive poison gas. And that's actually what is coming out of Fukushima, a radioactive poison gas. And it's from the nuclear reactor explosions. It's from the explosions now underground from the elephant foot or the fissioning uh, melted fuel that's burning down into the uh, geologic environment and it is getting into the ocean and um, it they just travel everywhere uh, they're in water they're in air everything is every living thing is inhaling them or ingesting them and or ingesting them our drinking water is all contaminated and um, 
a nanoparticle has three effects. Number one is a chemical effect. So a chemical effect is, is from the electrons in the outer shore cell, um, sorry, shell of the, uh, the uh, atom. And uh, that would be like iron or iodine or calcium. They all have a chemical effect. The next effect is the radioactive effect, and that is the energy ejected from the nucleus. Now, all elements are formed in star processes with energy regimes, temperatures, and pressures that are unknown on the planet Earth. And when these atoms are formed, for instance, plutonium and uranium form in supernovas. And so um, it takes the extreme temperature and energy regimes in those star processes to form these more and more complex atoms. And in the case of uranium and plutonium, when they eject an alpha particle, for instance, uranium-235 ejects an alpha particle from the nucleus, the binding energy for the molecules in the human cells that make life possible in the cell. Uh, it's less than 10 electron volts of energy. But that one alpha particle, which is going to travel a distance of about one cell releases 4.2 million electron volts. So it's nuking or supernoving, supernovaing a cell. And as that alpha particle travels along its path, it's releasing the loose change of energy with as gamma rays. So you see these little squiggly gamma rays that are released as the alpha particle moves through tissue. And they have their own energy. Some uh, elements release x-rays from the nucleus. Some release beta particles. It's all, all, all deadly to biological systems, whether it's an alpha particle, beta, gamma, or x-ray. They damage in different ways, and it depends on the how much energy is released over how long a path. Um, but the alpha particle is the most deadly and it's because it travels a very short distance and releases a very concentrated amount of energy in a very uh, small distance. And that energy proliferates out through uh, the whole neighborhood of cells around the cell that it probably kills. And all those cells become dysfunctional. This is what causes disease. So that's the radiation effect. But the deadliest effect is the non-specific enzyme or catalyst effect from the nanoparticle size itself. And these nanoparticles get into the lungs, 70% of what you inhale goes directly into the bloodstream and it gets into the lipids and or the cholesterol and it's carried into the most intimate parts of the cell and the body. Hidden, it's hidden in the lipids and hidden in the cholesterol so that the body's defenses cannot protect against it. And what happens in the cell is the cell is a network of pipes and plumbing and pumps and all kinds of, of uh, uh, different technologies that make life possible in that cell that bring the nutrients in and take the waste out and uh, provide energy for the body. So when those radioactive particles come in, uh, each step in the cell is tr triggered, turned on and off, by a specific catalyst or enzyme the body produces just for that one step. Each step has to happen in a procedural manner. A distinct sequence. A distinct sequence. And these particles come in, 
and they're like a bunch of kids running around in a room turning white switches on and off and making noise and creating total chaos and it screws up all the processes in the cell now that's bad enough that's radiation exposure but what they've done now is they have introduced a tremendous multiplier effect in other words synergistic effects where the radiation interacts with chemicals radiation pathogens in the chemtrails for instance uh, the chemtrails are a multiplier effect with the radiation on top of that you have genetically modified food and organisms gmo that are foreign to life on earth and they are poisonous they are a toxin and they're interacting with the chemtrails and with the radiation and remember all our food and water is contaminated now and then you have other factors for the last 20 years iodine has been removed from the american diet by the government and americans are depleted by 80 percent in their bodies of what normal iodine levels should be there so when fukushima radioactive iodine spewing out of that uh that that death machine uh is coming into our environment into our bodies into our developing fetuses into our unborn babies it's absolutely screwing up the whole body even before that poor baby is born it's causing the endocrine system which is the pituitary the thyroid and the adrenal gland those three glands control and synchronize all of the organ function and everything in the body that makes life possible in a living human being and um, so you're screwing that up and with the gulf war syndrome in our soldiers that's a great example of what radiation does um i have a list that was uh from the veterans affairs a presentation someone leaked the powerpoint to major doug rocky he gave it to me and there's a list of the veterans administration uh diagnoses in 631,000 uh gulf era soldiers who went to war in Iraq in 2003 and they had never been on a battlefield they were policemen they were national guardsmen they'd never been exposed to radiation and um, as soldiers and the highest rate of illness diagnosed in those soldiers and there were multiple diagnoses as well they didn't just get sick from one thing it was a whole web of diseases and it was different in every person and it changed over time neuromuscular diseases neuromuscular problems that's from damage to the mitochondria that are uh, produce all of the energy for the body the ATP adenosine triphosphate there were uh, mental problems was also were also very high there were uh, poisoning, skin rashes, just, uh, 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 let's see, um, digestive system problems, metabolism problems. And in some soldiers, they were losing weight faster than if you starved them. It's because their body could not manufacture glucose because the metabolism of what they were eating was interrupted. And so the body had to take the nutrients it needed to produce glucose so the soldiers could, could move or could live, the fun body function could continue, and they had to take it out of the human muscle of that person. So they lost weight faster than if they were starving to death because they were digesting their own bodies.